Hello, I'm Alexey Zarkov. Hello, I'm Daria Lotrio, historian and genealogy expert. Today we will speak about how to search relatives in Russia and former Soviet Union. Let us tell you a couple of words who we are. Uh, we represent the project uh, RussianGenealogy.com. This is a project of a family space that are you, which is number one uh, family in genealogy social network uh, in Russia with about one million registered users. We work with experts and historians and genealogy experts all over Russia, and we are sure we can be helpful to you. Four main uh, themes we wanted to discuss with you today, uh, and we hope you find them useful. Um, they are relating uh, everything uh, about search uh, of your relatives in Russia. We will tell you how, how to start looking for relatives in Russia, what documents uh, you might need, how to apply to archives, and how we can help you. Okay. So let's talk uh, about how to start. Imagine that uh, you have a relatives from Russia, or you believe that you have a relatives from Russia. The first thing to do is to understand exactly what information you already have, what you know and what you don't know. And second is to understand what do you expect from inquiries in archives. There are many archives in Russia, different types, located in different regions, uh, containing very, very specific information. So before you do your genealogy research, before you do any step, just start from understanding what you have. Daria? The first step is uh, to find out and structure all information you already have and already know about your relatives who you think are from Russia. This is date of birth and death, place of birth, where uh, they were buried, and other facts of, for example, repressions or arrests in Russia, and any other important information. The other step is to study all documents you have in, uh, in your family archives, such as letters or maybe certificates or photographs or cards, postcards, etc. And the third uh, step is to talk to other family members uh, who know something about their relatives in Russia to find some links between the relatives. These are all basic things, but uh, if you start from them, uh, it will be much easier for you to continue further. Okay, imagine that you have done all this work, you know exactly uh, where your relatives come from, you know approximately uh, what age they lived, you know some information and you're ready to start. Uh, what you need to do further, what documents uh, you should be checking. Uh, we structure documents into two main segments, key documents and additional documents. Daria? So key documents are very, very important. They are birth and marriage and uh, death certificates, school and high school certificates, documents from companies and organizations where your relatives served, maybe um, documents from the army, where uh, army troops, where did they serve, uh, facts about arrests and repressions and uh, some other facts. And additional documents uh, could service uh, you to understand the details about the life of your relatives in Russia. Uh, it could be, mm, for example, addresses, where did they live in Russia, in some towns and cities or villages, um, mm, some list of regist registrations of um, citizens in Russia, etc. Well, you might need to spend more time on finding additional documents, and they can be stored not only uh, in state archives, but in many, many, many uh, other establishments. So start with key documents for first, and then move on to additional documents. Uh, Okay, uh, what are the sources of documents uh, for your relatives? Um, first, you should understand that uh, Russia has a long and very interesting history, and that actually very much influences how you should uh, search your relatives. If uh, you are looking for relatives in Soviet, who lived in Soviet time, uh, then you should first apply to state registration bodies. They are called ZAGs in Russian. You should also check uh, executional committees, this is regional bodies, military units and uh, sometimes uh, other establishments that are specific to uh, either to the uh, career of your relative uh, or to his region. Please know that only some part of these documents is in possession of Russian regional archives, so most likely you'll need to apply directly to, uh, to these bodies. Uh, and concerning the documents issued before 1917, here is uh, a little bit easier. So these mostly documents are stored in Russian regional archives and uh, most likely you'll need to, to be checking church certificates, right? Yes, that's true, and the only point you have to know where your relatives lived, where they were born, they were mm, married or died, in which region of Russia. Okay. 
So these are examples of solid time documents. Here we see the birth certificate. Birth certificates uh, are issued by ZAX since uh, 1922, and then they contain uh, the key information such as who was born, the date of birth, place of birth, who are the parents and where they live, date of issue of the certificate. Sometimes uh, you will receive a, a certificate issued by archive on the basis of the genealogy arch records. So they will look like, like this you see. Yes, this, this will be just uh, a piece of paper with information. So it contains the same information as above, but it's written in terms of a script. Uh, okay. Now in terms of marriage certificates. So uh, this is uh, how they look like. They're all in Russian. Sometimes they will be uh, in Russian handwriting. In many cases, they will be in Russian handwriting. So you will need to know uh, Russian handwritten language. You will need to distinguish one letter from another. Uh, it's not sometimes easier also yes, for Russian. So <laughs> yes. this is the reason of, uh, of the first mistakes and the misunderstandings in genealogy when people misinterpret what is written in the certificates. So these uh, documents contain information, who got married, date, facts about change of last names, which is absolutely important. So the ladies change their names to the name, last names of their husbands, and therefore you should take it into account during genealogy search. So uh, in many cases you'll need to be writing requests both for maiden name and for uh, the last name you know. And, uh, uh, and also you can find here other important information like, like issue date and uh, like stamps with the body what, yeah, that issue did. Place of marriage. Place of marriage as well, yeah. Okay. Let's move down to the uh, death certificate. That's how the death certificate looks like. It contains information about who died, when, the reason of death, uh, place of death, state registration body that issued this death certificate and the date of issue. So this is the most information um, from the Soviet times. Uh, uh, when speaking about uh, birth certificate, uh, maybe coming uh, um, coming back for for Pre a while. Revolutionary uh, time. Yeah. Revolution time. Yeah, you should understand. That, for example, if you uh, if you have the birth certificate of a person who was born in uh, after 1917, and you get some more information about his parents, right? So the parents most likely will be born before 1917. In many cases, they will be born before 1917, yes. right? So in this case, uh, you you'll need to combine uh, research. So you need to search everything about the person who lived, uh, who was born after 1917, in um, yeah, in the establishment that uh, yes. uh, keep this data. And uh, for the person who lived before, you'll need to apply to uh, most likely Russian regional archives. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll speak about this a little bit later. Yeah. So this is not an easy work and. Uh, uh, another interesting thing that since uh, there are different bodies, they can be located in absolutely different places. It's That's not. True. It's not always. Um, er, it's not a rule that uh, uh, even uh, if two establishments uh, store information from one region, they can be located physically in different cities. So uh, most likely, you'll need to travel a lot to um, to be checking all the data. So take it into the account. Uh, I don't know, good news or bad news, but <laughs> that's how it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit more difficult than typing uh, a string in Google. Okay, in terms of access to these documents, uh, well, actually, here's um, a good story. Uh, all these ZEX, all the state registration bodies, uh, they allow people to uh, get uh, copies of those documents. So all you need is uh, to apply correctly. Unfortunately, the application should be done uh, in Russian, and it should be done exactly to the ZEX uh, where the person was born, married, or died. You cannot uh, apply to the archive which um, keeps the information uh, uh, about marriage and uh, let's say like a person was born in one place, married in another and died in third, right? So if you want to get uh, a copy of certificate uh, of a marriage certificate, right, then you should exactly apply to the ZAX uh, which keeps uh, information about uh, marriage, right? So you cannot apply to yeah. the ZAX uh, that keeps so information where a person was born. S sometimes you have to apply to many ZAXs. To, to check the information there. Uh, for example, of one large region, so you have to write to every ZAX in every city. That's, that's a problem, really. <laughs> yeah, and uh, once again, the application should be uh, written only in Russian language. So Russian ZAX most likely do not speak English, and even if they do, <laughs> according to Russian legislation, they, yes. they process only, uh, only forms of application written in Russian. 
uh, well, it's bad news, but uh, you can always consult RussianGenealogy.com and uh, our experts can help you with this. This is not a, a difficult task, so this is pretty easy and pretty quick. Uh, okay, and you can request to clarify data from uh, from the records. Uh, you can uh, not only just uh, apply to ZAX to, to get your copy, but you can apply to, to clarify a cer certain uh, piece of information, right? So you might not need to, to get a full copy, you just uh, might need to clarify either place of birth or date of birth, if you know some part then of the equation, right? You can get another part. So this is, this is all possible. So this is already working, people use it. Um, in terms of other sources of information, uh, well, there are plenty of them. We will we'll quickly go through the most important ones. Daria, maybe you'll tell yes, us a little bit more. Yes, this is a very important service of um, Centre of Ministry of Inter Internal Affairs. You can also apply there and to check if they have some information about uh, your relatives because maybe they were repressed or arrested uh, during the Soviet period. So you can also apply these um, bodies and they have a lot of information. They collected it from official bodies um, of Russian Federation. So it's also a very good source of information about your relatives. Okay, yeah. Just check the string. It is also in Russian, but since this is a website, you can use Google Translator, so it gives you an understanding of uh, what is on the page. But all the application, of course, uh, also should be done in Russian. Uh, okay, now in terms of uh, documents issued before 1917, well, they're kept mainly in state archives, right? And uh, there are four main types of state archives, uh, yes. and we will tell you a little bit more uh, about them. They're federal, regional, municipal, and departmental. Dari, maybe you can uh, share a couple of so knowledge of how they're different. Federal archives, they collect information mainly before um, the 19th century, so it is uh, from the 15th until 18th century. Uh, so it could be information from a Russian Imperial Army and uh, Russian state um, institutions, uh, which, for example, collected taxes or whatever. So our archive collects information dated by 19th and uh, 20th century and sometimes the first half of the 20th century and the documents um, are from the Russian state uh, institutions which task was to mm, get records about the citizens of Russian imp Empire and of the Soviet Union. So it could be the information about taxpayers or <coughs> people who lived in some cities etc etc who had to serve in the army. So um, a lot of information uh, concerning people from uh, people lived in, in, in Russian Empire and uh, in Soviet Union. Municipal archives collect information uh, related to the um, uh, uh, labor of people in various uh, factories or plants or whatever. And uh, it, con it connects mainly with the labor career. And the departmental um, archives, it's the archives of uh, these institutions of various types. It could be uh, plants, factories, or schools, or um, army, or, or ministries. Ministries yeah. and various um, railroads are yeah, also correct, one of them. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it could be ever. Uh, this information is not uh, delivered to um, federal or regional archives. Okay, uh, here is an example of a uh, registration book, right, so you see how it looks like. Uh, well, the problem is uh, not only in handwriting, but it's also in old Russian handwriting, right, so sometimes it's not, uh, uh, it's not easy for even local people to understand what's written, uh, but uh, I mean, you most likely you'll, you'll use experts' help to interpret this. But they contain absolutely invaluable information about who the person was, what his family was, etc., etc. Yes, and from which region did they come? Which region mm -hmm. did they come? Okay, now let's talk about how to search in state archives and how to make inquiries. It's once you know information about your relative, once you know exactly where, what information you want to find, and you know approximately uh, where it can uh, be stored, uh, it's time to write inquiries. So this here is the list of uh, archives in Moscow, or federal archives in Moscow and St. Petersburg, right? So uh, depending on the information you need, you will need to apply to either one of them or to um, several of them immediately, right? So maybe the most important is the State Archive of Russian Federation and State Archive of uh, Ancient Records. But all the rest can also contain uh, 
uh, lots of valuable data. That's true, for example, um, in archive of military history, whatever. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, now we speak a little bit of uh, regional archives. So, uh, well, since Russia has uh, many, many constituent territories, right, so uh, you'll need to apply exactly to the archives uh, that stores, um, stores uh, information from the corresponding territory. Right, so uh, basically, uh, in many cases, uh, you'll need to apply to the archives uh, of the region your person lived. But in some cases, you'll need to apply to the neighboring as well, because uh, the information and the, uh, the, the documents that are stored, they can be uh, stored uh, also in nearby regions. So yes, because the, the frontiers of the regions were changed. So yeah, they were changing mm -hmm. several times, they're changing even nowadays. Yeah, so you, you, you need to, to know exactly, and if you apply to the region, you get no information, no feedback from, from the archives. You, we advise that you can also contact uh, the neighboring regions. Yeah, so this is, this is on the slide here we see the, the structure of like how the archives, uh, regional archives are structured. And we see the archives of the republics, we see the archives of the um, uh, so-called territories cry, Russian the cry, uh, basically cry is a bigger region, right? And uh, we see the archives of the smaller regions, right? For example, some archives of Moscow, archives of Amur region, right? So you, you, you can easily find the address uh, of each archive you need. Well, basically, if you speak Russian, then you can check uh, this family space project we were talking in the beginning, right? So here is the link uh, where you can find uh, the list of archives and the addresses. And uh, all you need is uh, like either call them or send them email, uh, send them official letter with the request. Okay, let's move further. The municipal archives. So municipal archives, uh, as I told you, uh, they collect information about the labor career of people uh, of the 20th century mainly. So if you need some information, if you know, for example, that your grandmother worked in some factory or worked in some school, so you can uh, send the, uh, the request to this archive of the city where this uh, institution was located and ask if they have uh, some documents from this institution um, and to check if they have some uh, data uh, or, or biography information about your relative, about your grandmother. Oh. The departmental archives. So uh, the same, uh, they contain information about labor career of your relatives, about your uh, uh, grandmothers and grandfathers, and they did not send this information to state archives. This is the problem because in state archive you can uh, check it according to the law, but uh, the uh, departmental archives has their own uh, um, laws, uh, inter inner laws of um, uh, functioning, and so uh, it's sometimes diffic more difficult to check the information in these archives, but anyway you can send the request uh, there as well uh, to ask the biography information about uh, of your relatives who served in some uh, um, some factories, plants, or railway, um, or whatever. Well, uh, again, if you have some doubts, you can always consult with our experts, and we can help you to prepare the request uh, wisely, so that the chances of uh, the consideration are much higher than you write it uh, on your own. Uh, this is an example how to write a request to Russian state archives. Uh, like if you speak Russian. Then, then it's easy to read. If not, then basically, uh, like you, in the upper part of the inquiry, you should write uh, uh, to whom you're writing this inquiry. Right? You should write uh, who is asking, basically your name, your full name. And then you ask to present you a copy of particular books about uh, uh, birthday, or about like any other piece of information you ask of your relative, and then you stipulate as much data as you know. Uh, you should also stipulate that you, your guarantee payment, uh, sign it, and send the original. Uh, well, the highest chances uh, if you send it uh, by ordinary mail, not by email, but by ordinary mail, then uh, with uh, this establishment, the chances are higher. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Well, if you need, again, if you need help, then just consult our experts. We will, we will help you. Okay, now how RussianGenealogy.com can help you? Uh, once you have some more information how it works, well, if you find that uh, you can do it on your own, it's fine, uh, wish you success. If not, and you need some more 
uh, advisor and uh, consultation, then feel free to contact us, we will help you. So what exactly uh, um, uh, can we help you? We will help you first understand and structure all information you already know about the relatives in Russia. Uh, right, so we can do it either by Skype interview or by telephone call and uh, once you assemble as much data as you want and talk to our experts, we can help you to, to understand and focus your, uh, your further, further steps uh, and focus your research in, in the future. Uh, we'll also be able to tell you uh, where you can get additional information about the people you will be looking for, right? It will be either regional archives or federal archives or departmental archives or in some case you might need to in some museums in museums yeah or, or whatever i mean this is really 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 lots of factors you should take into account it's easy to talk to an expert right and um, once you have this information we'll basically help you to write this inquiry like just in russian with no, no problem so write it quickly send it by uh, russian mail so deliver it pretty quickly and uh, we can help you to do all the further research and work in, in, in Russian and CIS archives. And, uh, since Family Space is the uh, Russian largest genealogy network, so we have uh, our partners, we have our, um, our contacts uh, all over Russia, all over, uh, cities, all over Russian cities, and uh, uh, it's not a problem for us to find a local expert who will be helping you exactly in the city and in the town. Uh, so it's like it saves time and money for both parts. You don't need to travel uh, several times a week. You don't need to, uh, to schedule your meetings, uh, right? Yeah, so you spend you time in the, in the archives. You don't need to come and, and, and uh, search in like multiple pages. Um, you don't need to read the uh, old Russian writing. So basically all we get is just high quality, quick uh, support from uh, experts uh, who, are, who have done hundreds and thousands of projects like this. Okay, hope that was useful. Uh, we'll try to continue recording webinars. Um, so stay, uh, stay in touch with us. Uh, subscribe to our newsletter, which is on www.russian-genealogy.com and we'll be happy to help you. And to find more about your relatives in Russia. Uh, who knows, maybe you're a relative of a Russian Tsar or uh, one of uh, well-known politicians uh, oh, in writers, modern times. Or oh, writers, maybe Tolstoy or Pushkin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're welcome. Or composers, welcome, feel free. Guys, we'll help you. This is our address again. And uh, well, if you speak Russian, also a, a good piece of advice. Uh, we do plenty of webinars in Russian about how to search. Uh, we give exact advices, exact manuals, how, how you can do your research on your own. You could try something on your own. If you speak Russian, just go to familyspace.ru-webinar and find already lots of recorded videos. Uh, well, you can ask questions to our experts and uh, well, we can get lots of useful information. Well, thank you very much. Looking mm -hmm. forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.